Hi, Daniel. Hi, Sarah from the upcoming. Such a pleasure to have you here with us. Um, maybe just to kick off for people who've not had a chance to see Starbaker yet, you could just give us a bit of an intro. What can people expect when they watch the film? Well, Starbaker is based on a novel of the same name, and it's a story about a couple who move to the Dales set in the 70s um, and sort of strange things start happening to their son and uh, there's mentions of a wood sprite that exists there called Jack Gray. And obviously um, this is your follow-up to Apostasy which you had lots of success with when you read Andrew's book. What really stood out to you and why was this the right story to take forward for your second feature? Lots of different elements from the book. One was uh, the kind of the style and the attention to detail you know uh, of, of the animal in the story the sort of macro level detail that I was taken with and also how it was um, trying to say something about springtime and, and about rebirth, something like ancient and spiritual that I really enjoyed. This is, you know, British folk horror, sort of, uh, it's, it's most pure in a way, you know, it just seeps from, from every frame, um, the sort of eeriness, you know, you've really captured something about the, the setting, being in the Yorkshire Dales, what kind of other films might have you been looking to? Maybe the fact, you know, thinking of The Wicker Man, these sorts of movies from the 70s that maybe informed the look and feel of your film. Lots of stuff from the 70s. There's the obvious stuff like The Wicker Man. Uh, I love that film. It's one of my favourite films of all time. Um, but then we're finding lots of TV stuff, you know, works. The works of Nigel Neal, uh, M.R. James adaptations. One in particular, Marin, um, a Nigel Neal one-off, uh, that Andrew Hurley the author of the book really loved and we spoke a lot about that in the development. Yeah, lots of great sort of 70s, sort of weird stories, strange stories that you can't quite identify, you know, they're not necessarily horror, they're not necessarily like psychodrama or kitchen sink, they're like somewhere in between, which is what we were trying to emulate. And thinking of these absolutely incredible performances from Morfitt and Matt, how did you know these were going to be the right actors for your Richard and your Juliet? And how did you kind of bring them together? I mean, the tension between them, them both going on their own journeys of grief, of trauma. There are so many layers to those performances. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're both incredible actors. Uh, um, I knew very early on that they were right for the roles. They sort of got, uh, they both have a, a classical quality to them um, they both work in different ways but together it, there was a kind of chemistry uh, um, that, and they just everybody got on so they're really easy to work with and just finally in terms of the takeaways I mean I guess like really great contemporary horror you can really lean into the sort of supernatural elements or you can really lean into you know the thematic things about how we deal with generational trauma, how we deal with grief, um, and it can be a way of sort of making those things manifest. Exactly, yeah, that's what a great folk tale is. It's about trauma being passed down through pal palatable ways, you know, which uh, a lot of folk stories are about. Fantastic, thanks for your time. Really enjoying the night, thank you.